All right, in this video, we're gonna talk about the center points for uh, scaling X and scaling Y. And we can adjust these for our shape to have it to scale to different spots. Now I have a grid displayed over here in KOWP. This grid will be helpful in terms of uh, figuring out where you want your center point to be. Right now I have it just scaled to right here at the center of the screen. As you can see, I have it scaled right there. Now the green dot, don't worry about the green dot. That's just for you to visually see where this thing's gonna be scaling to when we go and change our center points for scale X and scale Y and all that stuff. So a little bit to look at here. Well, go ahead and pick this grid up. The grid is underneath any of my videos in the description, KOWP free stuff and then go to KOWP grid stuff and get that one right there. Even if your dimensions, your screen dimensions are not 1280 by 720, you can still set this up, I think, to uh, have it displayed correctly. So inside of KOWP, go ahead and add that image, set its width to 720, and even if it doesn't look exactly like mine, I mean, you can change the color using colorize and all that stuff, but what's important is to make sure that it's scaled correctly. And a way you can test that is just add a quick square to the piece and let's see if it fits inside that grid correctly. So I'm gonna add a square, set its width to 50, and there's that square right there. You know, I, I wanna make sure I can fit this inside of one of these little cells. All these cells are squares. Let's just make sure it fits correctly inside of there. So I'm just gonna move it into one of these cells. So once I move the position a little bit, as you can see, that square fits inside of there just fine. That's exactly what I want. All right, so once you have that set up, now whatever shape you want to scale, it's gonna work the same for all of them. I just have a square for right now. And you noticed a moment ago that I had it just uh, scale into the center of this shape, but we can change that center point for our scale. Now I do have an on off switch toggling this animation and you know, check out some of my other videos there. I wanna go ahead and jump right into this center point stuff. So suppose we want the, the scale to be somewhere else um, on this square. Um, suppose I want it to scale to say like right here. I'm gonna move that green dot to right there and we're gonna be able to adjust the center points for our scales and it's gonna to move to that spot. So as you can see, I did change this center point right here. Um, I haven't changed the actual complex animation yet, but what we have to look at is, look at the center of your shape, wherever it may be, it doesn't have to be in the center of the screen, but look at the center of your shape and using the grid, uh, since these are 50 by 50 little pieces, we're gonna go 50 to the right and we're gonna go 100 up. Now, the only thing about this weird about this is that when we go up, our Y value is actually gonna be negative. But when we're going to the right, our X value is going to be positive. Think about your algebra days when you were plotting points and lines and all that stuff. The only difference here is that whenever we go up, we're actually gonna use a negative Y value. Um, when we go down, we use a positive Y value, but X works just like the way it should. To the right's positive, to the left is negative. So let me show you how to set that up. Complex animation, I have it reacting on my animate, my little on off switch, nothing too tricky there. You can call it whatever you want. And I already had this thing scaling X, Y to zero. Zero means it's gonna take it all the way down to teeny tiny nothing. All right, well what we have to do is we have to set these center points at the very beginning of our animation. And our scale X center, remember that was 50 units to the right. So I'm gonna type in a 50. So there's my scale X center of 50, and now let's change our scale Y center. Remember, we went up, but we wanna use a negative Y value. So what this should do, um, right 50, and this is up 100, it should move this scale point to that green dot right there, because that's where that green dot is in, that's where that green dot is in relation to the center of this shape. Let's see if it scales to that green dot. And as you can see, that's exactly what it's doing. It's scaling right to that pinpoint location. And that's why this grid is helpful because it can help you really figure out exactly where you wanna to scale to. Now, you don't have to scale to, that, uh, to a spot inside of the shape. I mean, you can scale to wherever you want. I wanna move this green dot somewhere totally random outside of this shape, and we're gonna see that it's still going to scale to that dot. So as you can see here, I definitely did move that green dot quite a distance uh, uh, outside of the shape. And we always wanna relate the center to where it is in relationship. Okay, this right here, where is that in relationship to the center of this shape? Well, we have to go left for X value. Well, let's count how many? One, two, three, four, five. So five times 50, remember each one of these is 50. So that's gonna be 250, let me write that down. And since we're going to the left, we're gonna use a negative 250 for our X. 
And then what about our y value? Well, we're going to go down 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So that's going to be 500. And remember, since we're going down, we're actually going to use a positive y value. So our center now needs to be at negative 250 for x, and our y center needs to be at 500 because that's where this little center point for scaling is in relation to the center of the shape. Let's go ahead and change that. So I've changed my scale X center to negative 250 and my scale Y center to 500. That's going to be way off of that shape. And what this square should do, it should scale to that point right there based on how I have my grid set up. And as you can see, it is moving right there to that spot. So that's why the grid's helpful. It helps you kind of exactly pinpoint where you want it to go. And one more thing to mention here too, let me just scale this back out. What we can do as well is we can uh, scale just the X or scale just the Y. So let's just go into our complex animation real quick. And I'm just going to change this scale X, Y. I'm going to change it to just scale X. So I've changed that to just scale X. Well, what is this going to do? Um, what it's going to do, even though I didn't change anything else about this thing, let me go back and show you, I didn't change any of those values. What that's going to do is it's going to, since that X value is over here, what was it? Uh, negative 250, like it's one, two, three, four, five, right there. What it's going to do is it's going to scale that square to a vertical line right here. And if we animate this, watch what's going to happen. It's going right here to this vertical line, as you can see, because that is where the X value is. It didn't go down because I told it to scale just the X. Now, if we come in here and change this to scale Y, what it's going to do then, when we scale Y, it's going to move down on the same horizontal line. It's going to scale down to this horizontal line because this is where my center point of scaling is. And you, you, the thing is, if you're going to scale just X or scale just Y, you don't have to have an X center and a Y center. Just make sure that you, whatever you're scaling here, you have its center point. But since I'm going to change this to scale Y, what that's going to do now is it's going to base it off this Y center, 500. So it's going to scale it down 500 pixels. Let's go ahead and have a look. Again, this horizontal line right here. And there you have it. As you can see, it is doing exactly just that. Now, something else to mention, too. Uh, we can change our shape. Let me go ahead and just bring this square back. And let's just change this to a uh, triangle, whatever you want it to be. I'm going to obviously change the size of this thing just so we can see it. And uh, now the thing is, it's still going to scale to that same spot. I haven't changed the complex animation. So still moving it to that same horizontal line when we scale Y. Now some other things to bear in mind too is this. This is very important. I hope you don't skip over this. Is if you move the shape. If you move the shape, this center point, now this green dot's not going to move because I don't have it set up like that. But if I go and move this triangle, it's going to move the actual center point of scaling based on its location from the center of the shape, not the center of the screen. So if I go and take this triangle, and suppose I just go position this up in the top right corner right there, it's not going to scale down this far. It's going to scale, well, let's go look. So inside of our complex animation, it's going to scale, the Y center is 500. So it's going to be 500 pixels down from the center of the shape, not the center of the screen. Please keep that in mind. So our center is, you know, roughly, um, right in here somewhere, but I'm just looking really at a horizontal line. So this is the center of my triangle, this horizontal line. And that's, we're kind of stuck in between two values. So I tell you what, um, I, I mean, we can still skip over, but I'm going to count down 500, but I'm going to count the halfway marks. So this is 50, 100, 150, 200, 250, 300, 350, 400, 450, 500. So it's going to scale right around here. That's where it's going to scale to because I didn't change any of my scale centers or my scale Y. I have that all set the same. But what I have done is I've changed it to a triangle and I have moved it. That's what's important. It's going to scale it down to right about here. Let's keep our eye on this. And as you can see, that's exactly where it scaled to. So that's very important to remember. Um, when you move your shape, it's not going to scale it down to wherever you think it is. It's in relationship to the center of the shape. 
I hope that makes sense. In a future tutorial, we will also dive into rotation centers. Um, and that's and then when you start combining both of these things together, I'll go ahead and give you a big hint. Rotation is no different. You still look at the grid and position wherever you want your X and your Y centers to be. It works the same way. And then start incorporating both of those together. I plan on doing that in a future tutorial. And there you have it. That's how you can scale the X and the Y centers in KOWP using complex animations. And that's it for this video. I hope it helped.